Hi guys, welcome to another lecture and today we'll discuss something about the 2022 update of NTP, uh, the newer, the updated uh, guidelines of HIV and TB co-infection that uh, the important part that you need to learn. And uh, before I begin, I would like to request you to uh, like, share and subscribe to the channel and also download my app, which is available in iPhone and Android. And, uh, you know, there are PG masterclass for uh, P P pediatric PG resident. If you know them, please forward this message it might be helpful for them there is also image based session for all the uh, INA site, uh, INA set and need pg and fmge aspirants so please check out my app so let's begin so uh, for tb and hiv as you know that uh, regardless of the cd4 stage we start the tb hiv treatment and there uh, the regimen is dependent upon the weight and age weight and age and what is the regimen Okay, so according to the weight and age, the regimen is made. So first one is weight less than 20 kg or a child less than 6 years. The second is 20 to 30 kg or 6 to 10 years. And the third one is very simple as you might have assumed more than 30 kg or more than 10 years. So the regimen have for pediatric patients, the following regimens have been proposed. So for a pediatric patient, we have to give abacavir based regimen. So we give abacavir, abacavir, we give lamivudine, lamivudine, and we give lopinavir, ritonavir. Okay, so the ropinavir, ritonavir, the same, this, this uh, is actually the same as the older one. The older regime, the changes are there in the uh, older children. In the old, uh, this are given daily as per the weight band. Now, the uh, for 20 to 30 kg or 6 to 10 year old children, we have to give abacavir, abacavir plus lemivudine. And lupinavir, ritonavir is replaced by doglu teravir. So doglu teravir is the new addition over here. And we give doglu teravir to the patient. And it is uh, given along with abacavir and lemivudin. Okay. And for older, initially it was tenofovir, efavirens and lemivudin. But now it is tenofovir. Lamivudin and Dogluteravir. Lamivudin and Dogluteravir. So, efavirenz based therapy has been completely changed to Dogluteravir now in HIV TB co infected patients. This is given in the NTEP 2022 guidelines. And what are the changes that you have to make in the ART regimen? So, if you are giving doglutegravir, doglu, doglutegravir, with a patient who is getting a, a tuberculosis therapy and a patient who is getting rifampicin, what you have to do is you have to double the dose of doglutegravir, double the dose. Because again, as you know, rifampicin will cause increased metabolism of the drugs. So if you are giving doglutegravir based regimen, then you have to double the dose of doglutegravir. Rest all drugs are same, but the doglutegravir dose should be doubled. In case of retonavir, lopinavir based regimen, you have to super boost with retonavir. If you are giving rifampicin, so you have to super boost uh, ritonavir, ritonavir. If you are giving along with rifampicin, and if you are giving epavirenz based regime, then no changes are required. No changes are required. So these are the updates that are given in the NTP 2022 guideline for patients uh, who are uh, under the therapy of HIV and TB. And here I wanted to just draw your attention to iris. So iris is immune reconstitution syndrome. Why does immune reconstitution syndrome occur? So when we start ART, when we start ART, what happens is that uh, the viral load is decreased. Viral load is decreased and CD4 cells are increased very much. And this CD4 cells will attack. They will attack the 
TB bacilli because it is something like you know a sleeping bear. If you wake a bear from hibernation, he will definitely kill you. And if you wake up a, a medical student early in the morning for uh, going to the gym, he will also kill you. So that is uh, like, you know, you wake the sleeping giant, you wake the uh, sleeping bear, then the bear will attack you. So that is why you have to remember that start ATT, you have to start ATT at least four to six weeks before ART so that you can minimize the load the tuberculous bacillus, the tuberculous bacilli load, so that you do not have iris. Now, iris is of two types. Iris is of two types. One is paradoxical, and second is unmasking. Paradoxical, and second is unmasking. Now, what is paradoxical? So, uh, there is worsening of symptoms after after initial response, after initial response to AKT, response to AKT. To AKT, there is worsening of tuberculosis symptoms. There is worsening of symptoms. While in unmasking is that, see, you have a patient of uh, HIV and you have never diagnosed TB in that patient, but you diagnosed TB after you started the AKT, uh, ART treatment to the patient. Like after you started ART treatment, the patient developed symptoms of tuberculosis and the inflammation uh, and the uh, tuberculosis lesions can easily be seen because of increased immune reaction. So first time diagnosed, at first time TB clinical features are seen after ART treatment has begun. So with ART treatment begun, our immune response is boosted and due to this immune response, you can easily spot out the lesions of tuberculosis that develop after you started the ART treatment. So you didn't know that patient has had TB. But after you started ART, the patient develops the features that will be suggestive of TB. So that is iris and iris is also a diagnosis of exclusion. The treatment of choice for mild is symptomatic. While in moderate to severe, you will have to give steroids. You will have to give steroids. So you have to uh, remember this and uh, uh, you know, you have to also remember one thing that in patient of uh, HIV where you have, a, if, if the country is a TB endemic country, you have to give BCG vaccination at birth. But in all symptomatic HIV patients or full blown AIDS, if a patient has full blown AIDS, then you defer the BCG vaccination. If the patient is born to a mother with HIV, you give the patient BCG vaccination. But the, if the patient has all the clinical features of AIDS, a full blown AIDS patient is there, you do not give that patient BCG vaccination. So I hope you remember this and I will see you in the next lecture.